Good morning, guys. It is Monday, June 24th, 2024. This is Bathrobe Business. I am Georgie Oganov. Wrong side. Where is it? <laughs> All right. I'm Georgie Oganov. I've got the coffee. I've got the news. Let's jump into it. Uh, so uh, it is the start of a new week. There's not so, too much going on. I've got two stories I'm going to talk about today. Um, one that affects Utah locally, which is the going to be the brunt of the video. The other one is just going to be a little bit of a side note. Um, so let's jump into it. Uh, first story is going to be from Bloomberg. So uh, there's this uh, excellent story from Bloomberg. Uh, it's a video. Actually, I just recommend watching the video. Um, it's just talking about interest rates. And uh, actually, I don't want to play it um, because there's an advertisement in here as well. So we have to listen to that before the video plays. But the link to the video will be in the bio, uh, in the description below. I recommend you check it out. Uh, one of the guys in the video is advocating for the fact that given where inflation is currently and where it could go before the end of the year, uh, and I completely agree with him, uh, it might end up being that we're seeing more of a rate hike than we are a rate cut. And he also talks about the exactly what I've echoed on this channel multiple times. At most, we'll get half a a quarter basis point cut, maybe sometime in September. And what's going to happen? Inflation is going to come roaring back, and then the Fed is going to have to double down and raise rates even higher. So he's saying the likelihood of a cut is unlikely, and the likelihood of a rise is more likely, uh, because he's saying that we could see be seeing inflation going up another three to five percent before the end of the year. So I completely agree with this video. I recommend you guys check it out. Uh, I think it's one of the most uh, sobering. Uh, videos I've seen on inf uh, inflation rates and interest rates simply because everybody you listen to is just saying that, oh yeah, interest rates uh, cuts are going to come. Just wait, just wait, just wait. We're already at the halfway point of the year and they haven't come yet. And the Fed needs to see a progression in order to cut and they won't. Uh, we talked about on this channel uh, just a couple days ago. It was a video I posted just a couple of days ago about how uh, housing costs just keep rising. Um, Median house price is going up in the United States. It doesn't matter what region or what area in the country you look at. If you just type in home sales or mortgage sale, mortgage prices or whatever it is into Google, you'll see stories everywhere from Boston to California that housing is still expensive and still rising. Prices are not getting cut. And so cutting interest rates into that kind of market is just going to drive that higher. It's going to uh, drive higher the cost of living, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, that's pretty much all I want to say on that point. Um, the next story is the real story I want to jump into because this affects Utah completely. So um, this is in regards to Powder Mountain. So um, Powder Mountain obviously is the uh, ski resort area, ski and snowboard uh, up in Ogden Canyon. Um, this is one of the few smaller held ski resorts uh, left in Utah. Uh, and it seems like it's going the way of many of the resorts have and going very corporate and pricing out locals. Um, so before I jump into this, uh, last week I posted a video um, on Friday. In fact, I posted a video. It was the last video of the week about taxes. And uh, I talked to you guys about how taxes... Um, how the, the federal government keeps talking about a wealth tax, how they're passing, want to pass a wealth tax so far. It hasn't happened, but I feel like it's almost imminent. And I have, in full disclosure, supported wealth taxes in the past here and there, but I've kind of evolved in my thinking on that. Um, now, one of the reasons I, here's my argument for supporting wealth taxes is because we have rampant income inequality. It is greater now than it has ever been at any point in the United States history, and it's only accelerating. So a wealth tax is a way that we could stabilize that. However, I've evolved in my thinking on that, and I've come to different conclusions. So the whole video on Friday was to say that one of the best ways to correct income inequality isn't to add more taxes. It is to reduce tax burdens and to reduce tax burdens specifically on those that uh, don't be needing to pay these high taxes because it is a massive burden on them. That's the lower incomes, the middle income, and you could even argue higher income uh, below a certain threshold. You can draw the lines arbitrarily where you want. But, but the point of the video was cut taxes for everyone that's middle class, keep them where they are for everyone that's above. Specifically, I was talking about income tax. I was talking about full abolition of income tax below a certain threshold, which is considered middle class. Now, I'm not going to be drawing what that is. You could say it's 200000 You could say it's 500000 My point is, originally, the, uh, the income tax was passed as a wealth tax. That was the whole point. The federal income tax was passed as a wealth tax on the wealthy because of growing income inequality. But all that happened is that income tax encroached 
and now everybody has to pay income tax. That was the argument, is we should just abolish uh, federal income taxes for everyone that's middle class and below. And that will do more for income inequality than adding ex uh, additional taxes to what is already an overtaxed system. Now, I thought I was going to get criticism from the fact that I was saying cut taxes at all. I thought the, the main criticism would be like, oh, you're this right wing conservative who wants to just cut taxes, et cetera, et cetera. No, I, I actually got criticism from the right that I am endorsing an, inequal, an unequal system by keeping taxes in place. And I was not expecting that criticism. Uh, but I feel like this story is going to kind of vilify, uh, it, sorry, uh, vilify? No, not vilify. Uh, uh, I can't find the word. It's 6 a.m. Give me a break. Uh, is going to uh, kind of purge me of that sin because it talks about exactly what I was talking about in the video. So uh, in this story, uh, Powder Mountain is getting bought out by uh, private equity, led by Reed Hastings of Netflix. So they're buying out the mountain. They're going luxury. They're going to be pri raising prices, uh, pushing out locals. And actually, in addition, there's going to be an uh, ultra high membership fee where uh, you're, even the locals are probably aren't going to be able to afford to, uh, to ski because they, they're expanding. Uh, here it is, a yearly membership fee that ranges from 30000 to 100000 but it comes with an exclusive 2,000 acres of private skiing terrain not open to the general public. So not only is this place going luxury, this place is going ultra luxury. At least at every other ski resort in Utah, uh, we have uh, expensive pricing, but you're not being priced out of any specific skiing area. You just buy your lift ticket or your season pass and you can go wherever you want. Whereas these ones are going ultra luxury. And this is exactly what I'm talking about. This is the result of massive wealth inequality. Reed Hastings, a man who made his wealth through low interest rates. This is why I always talk about low interest rates are bad. You can't create billionaires of this wealth in high interest rate environments. They just can't borrow at, high, at rates enough to be able to build these corporations that are built entirely on debt and about squeezing out local businesses. Let's not forget, up until this uh, Netflix, you had local video stores. A lot of people say, well, Blockbuster dominated. Yeah, Blockbuster did dominate. But you still had local stores, local family-owned businesses where you could go and rent videos. Now, I'm not saying you can't progress. I'm not saying you can't have evolution in technologies. But what I am saying is when you can print money for free, of course, you're going to be able to create giant massive corporations in hedge funds, in private equity, in venture capital, and price out anyone else. And that's exactly what Reed Hastings did. And after he got that wealth, he went and he purchased a local ski resort. And now he's pricing out locals. This is what I mean about income inequality and about wealth inequality is it create it prices uh, people out of assets. And if you can't purchase assets, you can't grow in wealth because it doesn't matter how much money you have in the bank. Inflation is going to kill it. Inflation, in, in, especially in a low interest environment, even if you were in a CD, what, that's 1%, 2%, when even in a good climate, inflation is 2%. So even in a low inflationary market, you are losing money faster than you are gaining it. So your, your 100000 in the bank depreciates year after year. And after 10 years, it's actually worth only 80000 isn't it? Because 2% times 10 years is a 20% reduction in wealth. So it forces you to invest. This is why inflation is bad, period. But this is why low interest rates are bad. At least if interest rates are high, your money can fight inflation because it can still accrue interest in order to combat the 2% inflation or 1% inflation or whatever stupid number the Fed has decided is healthy. But at least in a high interest rate environment, you are rewarded for saving, but you can't in low interest rates. And in low interest rates, people can borrow money for free, create massive corporations, cash out, and then go and buy more assets that they then use to price out middle class, lower income, and everybody in between. So this is why I, I advocate for the fact that we should be cutting taxes on everyone that's middle class and below, and maybe even hot, upper middle class, I think, where the, is where the line should be drawn. I'm going to create a number, 300000 Anybody under 300000 in income a year shouldn't be paying any federal income tax, period. Everybody else can. And, and for those that criticize me that, that that's an unequal tax uh, system, yeah, it probably is. But it's already unequal in the fact that these people can borrow interest rates and uh, uh, borrow money at interest rates for free. 
Like you've been living in a rig system and you're uh, arguing with me about trying to fix that rig system, especially when a guy like Reed Hastings doesn't even pay federal income tax. He pays capital gains tax, which is 15%. So don't be coming to me and saying, oh, he's he's paying 40% and you're paying nothing. No, he's not. He's paying 15%. And I got no beef with Reed Hastings. He can do whatever the hell he wants. Just if it's going to, if the system is going to skew in one direction, it should also skew in the other. That's the whole point. So what's going to happen? Uh, this ski resort is going to go luxury and more locals are going to be priced out of the market, which has happened with every other ski resort in Utah. I mean, for, for decades now, for decades now, everyone has argued how the fact that locals can't really afford skiing anymore, especially those with, with families. So if you want to go up skiing or if you want to get a season pass, you're talking about four or $5,000 a year. That's what a season pass will cost you for a family of four or five. Or if you're going up for a single day, you're looking at about $500 to $600 for the lift tickets. And that's before you consider food and gas and parking and everything else. So, yeah, it, it, this is exactly what I'm talking about. This is why we need to adjust for wealth inequality. And if that means half the population, the middle class doesn't pay federal income tax, I'm more than happily supported. I will wave that communist flag high. But uh, don't come to me and accuse me of the fact that I support an unfair tax system when the whole system is already unfairly skewed towards the rich. Uh, that's pretty much my rant. Unfortunately, um, that's what's going to happen. So uh, this is a story on KSL. I will post it in the uh, in the description, of course, and uh, you guys can go and read the story yourself. Uh, it, it looks like it is a certainty. It's probably not a question. It's definitely going to happen. There's already construction plans in place. So uh, just go check that out. I mean, I don't see how we can fight it at this point, but if you guys can, I'll fight with you. Uh, I might see you guys tomorrow, but I actually might not. Uh, I've got some personal stuff going on, so I might not post a video tomorrow. But uh, hopefully I'll see you guys Wednesday. I hope you have a productive week, and I'll see you in a couple of days.